<laughs> there we go. All right. We are live. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so fantastic on this third. I think it's Thursday. Yeah. Thursday morning to spend some time with you, uh, Dr. Jen Asher and myself to uh, share with you uh, a bit more about Mopark Business School, our programs and so forth, um, and hopefully to leave you with um, sufficient information so that you can make an informed and a educated decision in terms of your own uh, developmental path that you are lies ahead of you and um, that you are considering. So we would be... Would be uh, um, honored if you should decide to make Mill Park your partner in your developmental future. So um, this is day 90, um, actually 90 days, 10 hours and 30 minutes into our lockdown. Um, so I truly hope that everyone is and, uh, very hopeful. Um, and uh, yeah, this morning, we're going to engage in this virtual type of space and we hope that you are going not only to enjoy it, but to, to leave you informed um, and have uh, be able to make some decisions going forward. So if we look at the agenda for, for this morning, um, very briefly, I'll provide you with a short overview. It's, I think it's just important to also contextualize uh, who we are and um, where specifically do we fit in into the bigger scheme of things. Uh, Dr. Usher, the MBA director, would then also talk about the admission requirements for the postgraduate diploma in business administration and the MBA. Um, and then have a look at the curriculum of both of those programs. Very briefly share a few thoughts with you on the distance uh, learning online platform and um we are very pleased to also have alumni for you today to share some of their experiences so colleagues without any further ado um business school uh, is a private higher education provider which have been around for more than 20 years already with numerous accredited fully accredited programs ranging from the certificate level at nqf level 5 up to the doctoral level at nqf level 10. And our campuses, the Melville campus in Johannesburg is the one contact campus. Um, and then we also have our uh, Claremont campus in Cape Town. That's where our, our head office is situated. And some of the other schools, which I'll refer to just now, which are mainly in the uh, distance learning um, environment. And then there's also Westville in Durban, where there's a, sa a satellite and a more of an administrative type of, of um, uh, campus. Now, as far as uh mill park is concerned um i don't know for those this is just for information buildings and i invite you to also go and have a look at stadio.co.za for more information so mill park is part of stadio holdings and um, the other subsidiaries within that uh, holding company is after they specialize in filmmaking um, uh, filmmaking, filmmaking education, they go up to a master's level qualification there. There's Embury, which is your teacher education college. Uh, they go up to an honors level qualification. There is Lysof, that is in your clothing, um, uh, uh, and um, uh, I've always forget this word, forgive me for it, uh, but clothing design, etc. qualifications, uh, which goes up to a, an honors level as well. There's also a Southern Business School who specializes more in the public uh, um, management and public administration space. They also go up to master's qualification. Then, of course, Mill Park Education, which is ourselves, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a, uh, in a, in a while. And then, of course, there's also Prestige Academy with uh, numerous bachelor's and honors qualifications. So that's just a bit of a background as to where we sit and by whom we own. And as far as education PTY Limited is concerned, we have five schools within the Mill Park education um, framework of which the business school is one and that's the information that we're going to focus on today. There is the School of Commerce where the undergrad qualifications from uh, the high certificate in management um, uh, or this, and then the advanced certificate and also the bachelors in business administration and the bachelors in commerce 
are, are, are um, uh, housed in that particular school. Then there we have the School of Financial Planning and Insurance, very niche focused on the financial planning and insurance industry with the highest qualification they to a postgraduate diploma in financial planning. Then we have the, um, the School of Investment and Banking, also very niche, niche with qualifications focusing on the banking sector with um, also going up to postgraduate diplomas in, in banking and also in investment management. And then we also have the Park College where your FET uh, type of qualifications sits within. Now, um, that is just a bit of background about who we are and now what we are offering as a business school. Our highest qualification, as mentioned earlier, is the Doctorate in Business Administration, Business Administration or the DBA, as we all uh, know it, at the NQF Level 10. And that we launched at the beginning of last year. Very proud to have now the full suite uh, ranging right up to the uh, doctoral level as well. Then, of course, um, our crown jewel, so to speak, is the Master of Business Administration at NQF Level 9. Uh, we have the Postgraduate Diploma in Business Administration at NQF Level 8. And then, of course, uh, any business school worth its salt also have, uh, you know, has uh, executive education for the corporate market and so forth. Uh, we all have short courses. Um, those are contact learning as well as um, online learning. And then, of course, we also uh, do uh, extensive consulting to industry. So, colleagues, now I thought I need to just share with you in terms of context, context is uh, what do we stand for and uh, to give you a sense of our ethos. So, we get up in the morning to empower leaders to pursue ethical and sustainable business practices which, is, which are informed by the SDGs. So, that is what me and my team get up to in the mornings. Um, so this vision and mission we have built on uh, the Greek term called phronesis, which means practical wisdom. And that it not only emphasizes the development of great leaders, but of utmost importance, leadership for the common good. And as you perhaps read into more our uh, uh, material, Colleagues, now if with that as background, I need to also brag a little bit about our memberships and awards. We are extremely proud to be uh, AMBA accredited, so which we are uh, specifically proud of. We have the only online MBA in Africa that has. AMBA accreditation. So we have AMBA accreditation for our MBA on both the contact learning as well as on the online learning, but specifically um, having both, we are the only one on, in Africa and with the online one as well, the only one in Africa. We're also a member of the Association of African Business Schools where we collectively, um, you know, uh, promote the, the, the agenda for our continent in terms of management education. Locally, we are a member of SAPSA, the South African Business Schools Association, where we also uh, play a, 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 you know, a very important role in contributing to the local uh, um, business school and uh, management education uh, space. And we are uh, proud also to say that the PMR Africa annual surveys that's done for those that offer MBAs the 2020 survey with industry. We are so uh, proud to, to, to announce that we have been ranked second overall in South Africa for providers of MBAs and MBLs. We are also a signatory to the principles for responsible management education, which is a United Nations uh, initiative uh, where we commit ourselves as a school also to the principles uh, set out in that particular initiative and I also invite you to go and have a look at um, you can just google PRP or prime and then you can have a look at what uh, what, what it means and implies we also uh, uh, a signatory to the responsible research in business management as well as a member of the Johannesburg 
Chamber of Commerce. So, friends, that as a bit of a background context, and um, I'm now going to hand over to my colleague, Dr. Jane Usher, just to take you through um, drilling down into the programs um, and what the admission requirements are, etc. Dr. Jane, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Kurvis. And hello, good morning to everybody um, who's taken the time out to join us. We really do appreciate the time. And um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is, as Kurvis has said, take you through the admission requirements for both the PGDBA and the MBA, and then give you an overview of the, the structure of both programs. So the admission requirements for the PGDBA, and I'm using acronyms, I apologize, um, but we do tend to do that. So it's the, the postgrad or the PGDBA, which is your um, NQF level eight qualification, and then your master's in business administration, your MBA level nine qualification. So there are areas of admission that you require for both of these qualifications. And the, the one fundamental is, and I think we've all understanding that we need it more and more now, is reliable internet access. Um, you really need this because you do a lot of work online, you need to do some research, so you need to be computer and internet literate as well. So that's a, that's a requirement for both qualifications. In terms of the, the another requirement for both is you need to be proficient in English because they are both delivered in English, you write your exams in English, and um, so you need to be able to communicate both verbally and in writing in, in English. And we, we do help you with that as well. For the PGDBA, you need to have a recognized bachelor's degree. And that means it's what we call a national qualifications framework. It needs to be at a level seven in order for you to get into the PGDBA. And you need to have, we do a, an assessment test, which is part of the process that where we look at um, whether you're accepted. And you need to achieve an acceptable rating in the, the assessment that we that we use um, and we do have a few alternatives um, so you know we can give you more information on that um, if you would like more more information on each of the programs but it's the same test for the pgdba and the mba and once you have done that assessment test if you do it for the postgrad you don't need to do it again for your mba so that's how you can move from your postgraduate diploma into your mba then your admission requirements for the master's is slightly higher. You need to have a recognized honors degree or postgraduate diploma, which is an NQF level eight. And that would be if you did the postgrad diploma with us, you could you move on to the MBA seamlessly. Again, proficient in English, the your assessment test. However, here we would like you need to be 25 years or older. And the reason for that is you need to have a minimum of four years relevant work experience because what you do is related directly back to a work environment. So all of the theory that you are learning has a practical and pragmatic component that you can apply straight away back in your workplace. And that is the, the important part of these degrees is that it's not just theory based. Theory is very important. You need to be able to take the theory and apply and use it in a practical manner. So that's why the 25 years old, um, we would. that's why we're using age there, but it's basically to say your minimum of four years work experience. And again, you want to engage with people who have work experience um, so that you can learn from each other because that is where a, a lot of the learning happens is from each other in your learning environments, um, your peer reviews, your participation. Um, that is where your learning takes place. Then we need to have a copy of your CV to see what experience you have, what sectors you're in, um, so that we know a little bit more about you. We would like you to also then do just a one page essay 
motivating why you want to do the MBA. What is the purpose for you to do this qualification, this this um, very good and, and fairly grueling qualification? Um, why do you want to do it? What is your purpose? And then we also have an interview. And um, as we are all doing things online, it would be online at this stage with your with the program manager. There may be the program manager and myself, or even sometimes Kurbis, depending on how luck, lucky you are, whether you get all, all three of us or one of us. Um, but we we look at this as a process for getting in. There isn't for admission. There's not one, we don't just look at one aspect. We look at you as a whole. Um, so, it, so it is a process. Right, so that's the admission requirements for both of the qualifications. Now I've put together the program structure so that you can see your year one of, of the postgraduate diploma. We have designed it in such a way that it is completely doable within one year. And we have broken up the modules or subjects that you do into roughly uh, 10, 10 week blocks and you do two of these modules at a time so that you can focus fairly well on those two modules and then start moving to integrate what you have learned in your general management environment and your business ethics with your corporate social uh, with your social responsibility and as i hope you can see on the slides that there are some, we've got a few colors. We've got gray, we've got red, which is maybe a bit alarming, but don't be alarmed. And then um, then different subjects. So in the gray, and these subjects are um, common to both of the, the, the modules. So once you do it on the postgrad, you've already done it. So you don't need to redo it for your master's. So you get an, ex an automatic exemption. So you do business or no, general management environment, which really sets the foundation for you in terms of what is what is business, the functions in terms of marketing, ops, some finance, so that you can start looking at it from a general aspect and begin to drill a bit deeper. We also do business ethics, which we feel is extremely important and corporate governance. And what was all the scandals happening um, in business at the moment, that is very important. So you take that back and you can apply and you can analyze what is happening in your businesses and different businesses. Social responsibility and environmental management, that is a very hands-on module. Um, you are expected to go into the communities, uh, Find a community, a charity that you can assist, and you do some. You start with consulting to them, and we have found with this module, the feedback we get from students is that it's quite a heart-wrenching module when you see what people are doing, how they are, are helping others within their communities, and we like to get you involved in that. And you do a presentation at the end of this, and um, it's really gratifying to see how. This often changes the students' minds, uh, your mindsets when you come in, because it really is taking into account your your mind as well as your heart. So those those three modules are common to both of the qualifications. Then I'm looking at management, accounting, and finance part one, which you see is in red, but you don't need to be alarmed at all. Why we've done that, why we put it in red, is just to say that. If you have not studied financial management at an undergrad level, so you haven't done a BCom or something like that, or you've never worked in with finance, um, you need to do the introduction to financial management. This gives you the basics that you need for the management accounting first module. And that is why we like to do that. It just helps you with the terminology that when you start with the module, you understand what the lecturer is saying and how to work with certain um, aspects within that module. Then focusing again on the, and, and that is also common to the, the masters and you would get a, an exemption for that. So you get four exemptions from your postgrad when you want to move on to your masters. 
Then the last three modules on the postgrad, we have design thinking and problem solving, which is again a very hands on practically orientated module where you solve challenges and problems, you work in groups and you do a presentation. It's based on empathy and the human perspective. So it's very good for customer service and experience areas that you want to to focus in on on businesses and challenges but it can be used in a variety of, of industries and ways to solve challenges that you come across in a in a very iterative process which is is great and we've also found there the feedback from students and the work that students have been doing it is phenomenal very innovative and creative it's great then your last two subjects your strategic management you need to be looking at how do you think strategically from a business perspective, what do you need to put in place and, and what structures should you be looking at and what is strategy? What does that really mean? We, we throw the word around a lot, but what is it? And we give you the practical tools there. Then we've got research methodology and you may wonder, you know, oh, why research? What we, what we do is start you off on your kind of research journey and it helps you identify problems again and ways to find reliable um, and valid information. I'm not sure well, uh, whether you are also getting, you know, a lot of accounts say within the um, COVID environment that we're in now where somebody, somebody says something about something and everybody panics um, and, and we need to look at information that is coming at you to say, is it val valid? Um, is it true? And so we start assisting you in, in finding sources that give you the correct information that you can properly use and rely on. Um, and that serves as a basis for all your other assignments as well, because when you, st when you start moving into your your MBA as well, it helps you to go to the right sources. What scholarly articles do you need to look at? What popular press can you look at? Um, you know, do you look at Facebook and take your, all the information from there? Perhaps not. So that is why it's a very useful module and it sets you up for your research that you're going to be required to do in your MBA. Let me move on to, I'm looking at your year one in the master's. So say you already have your uh, a postgraduate diploma or an honours degree and you want to go dive straight into the master's, that's fine. You would still do those, your general management environment, business ethics and your social responsibility. Here, however, we also give you, you need to do business report writing and you do some stats and you do presentation skills. And that also serves as a foundation for how do you write academically and business-wise? So how do you meld the two together? Because that's quite a skill that you you need to get um, start working on and get getting right for your for your dissertation. And it helps you with reports that you would be doing at work. So you do this module, you need to understand stats to a certain extent you may be wanting to go a quantitative route in your in your um, research and so <coughs> excuse me you do we give you an understanding of quantitative analysis and then presentation skills we do presentations and i'm sure you're doing it at work already um, what is a presentation do you always use need to use powerpoint um, and if you do want to use powerpoint what do you need to look at how do you present? Um, how do you look at your audience? And why we do that in year one is because you're going to be doing presentations. And we expect, obviously, a very high quality. And you have panels wh who are reviewing what you're doing. So you need to be practicing the skills of your report writing, your presentation skills. Then we have advanced research methodology, which now you are identifying a research challenge or problem that you want to look at and you get more advanced tools and methods that will help you to carry on with your dissertation. So this is an important subject here because 
This is where you're going to actually start working on your dissertation. And even though it's a module alone, you and it might change quite considerably when you when your supervisor comes in with a dissertation later on, but it serves as the basis. You do a literature review, you start thinking about what kind of research methods you're going to use. Are you going to go the qualitative route, which is your narratives and getting rich, deep data, or are you going to go to the stat side, um, quantitative, where you want to find out how many people, you know, what, what is the phenomenon there. Then you also do people management because we need to understand how to work with people, through people, to get things done. And we need to look at talent. How do we retain talent? And especially in the fourth industrial revolution that we're sitting in now in the um, pandemic where we a lot of people are working remotely, how do you make sure that you are able to use the talent to the best of your ability, how do you keep them motivated? How do they motivate themselves? Training, what skills are required? And so it's a, a very important aspect of what you need to learn. Operations and technology management, um, your business needs to operate. How's that gonna work? And how your know, technology, we all know is, is incredibly important now. How do you harness that to be efficient and effective? within your organization. Um, and it, this can be applied to um, if you're a SME or if you are an entrepreneur with one man, how do you make sure that you are effective and efficient? Then we all need to know about marketing. Um, how do you market if people don't know about you? You know, um, what is your strategies and how do you sell? You need to have some kind of sales management aspect. Right, excuse me a bit. Mm. Seem to have been talking a lot. Then you come to year two, and you're really on the home stretch now. And you can see here, we've got your management and accounting in red here. That's from your postgraduate. So if you've done your postgraduate with us, you already get that as an exemption. And again, the same applies in terms of the introduction to financial management that would have applied at the postgrad. Then we all, we have an exciting module with leadership and change management. And again, we're seeing now how leadership is extremely important. Change management is extremely important because we've all had to flip in terms of how we how we lead. Um, we lead with a bit more empathy um, as well as making sure the work is done and. How do you work with the changes that are happening to make sure that people feel supported? And we give you different ideas and different ways and, and styles of leadership. So that's a really big field. And again, it's related back to your, your businesses and it's local and global and, and from an, a continent's perspective. Then we, we have a module called Global Trade which is economics, because again, you need to know how economics from a local and global perspective will affect your business. Um, so it's quite a, it takes into account your micro and macro economics. Um, and you touch a bit in that module on, on the BRICS agreements as well. Then we've got your dissertation here, which after your research methodology, you can register for your dissertation straight away and you have year two to complete it. So you basically got a year to do your dissertation. And that is where you are allocated a supervisor who's a subject matter expert who will guide you and help you through the process. However, it's your pro it's your work. It's, um, you know, it's a challenge that you have identified and um, you drive the process, the supervisor, um, supports you and 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 assists you in that manner. Then, yeah, we've got another management and accounting um, module, which is this focuses more on corporate finance. Um, so slightly different to your first one in that it looks at corporate finance aspects and what do you need to be able to do as a general manager in a in a business from that perspective. Then finally, your final big 
uh, capstone module, as we, we call it, is integrated business strategy. That takes all the learning that you've done and it puts it into one module. So there's marketing, there's people management, there's leadership, there's economics, there's you're going to use all the skills and tools that you have started to assimilate in this module. And what we have done in the last um, time that we, we've run it, we use a simulation, which is a real world business simulation that is happening and you work on it continuously. You do work in groups, but with this, we start, we can see the contributions from each team member, each individual. And um, so this has actually worked really well. We're excited about this um, module and with the simulation, it's real time and you can see the impact of your decisions. Um, and again, there you do um, a report and a presentation here to a panel, which is um, what is part and parcel of what you would do at work. You, you often present to panels. Then at the moment, we have two electives. You can either do, and you only need to do one. If you want to do both, definitely more than welcome to. The one is entrepreneurship and innovation. I think that speaks for itself. It takes you right from the beginning of um, how do you create an idea? How What are you like as a person in terms of um, the qualities or, or whatever and what you need to be an entrepreneur and how do you what do you need to do to innovate what are the tools that you can use for that and again there you present to a panel you work in a, in a small group and you would often present to venture capitalists uh, people who are in the industry so a fun but tough um, presentation that that will happen there and the other elective is a very exciting elective, Business in Emerging Markets. That is our international trip. So that is where it's an immersive experience. You do some lectures to get and desktop research on the country that we would be going to that year. And it would, at the moment, it's the BRICS countries, Brazil, India, China, and Russia. And you then have to do, you have to, do the visit, but um, and it gives you masterclasses. We meet with businesses, we meet with the Chamber of Commerce in that specific country. You get to interact with the people of the country and the business people of that, that country. And then you come back and you do a business plan to see is it viable for either your your business that you're in to to have a start, to, to expand into that country, how would you go about it? You do a full business plan that you could, could then present to your exco. And that, in a nutshell, is the program structure for both of those qualifications. Just to talk a little bit about our distance learning online, our thoughts and how we have structured this, it is self-directed. So a lot of emphasis is placed on the adult learning principles that you want to do this, you're going to, we give you a, a detailed timetable and study plan for you to plan your, your semester or your block that you're working with. Um, you're expected to do the reading, do the participation. Um, it's a very proactive way of learning and then it becomes very efficient and effective because you are immersed in the learning and it's self-driven, it's intrinsic motivation. We have a lecturer support of one, one lecturer to 25 students in, a, in your online class, and you become very good um, colleagues and friends online because you're participating. We have live, at the moment we're using Adobe Connect, where those are compulsory for you to attend because it is synchronous. So while the lecture is there, your, your classmates are there, your peers are there, and you're all discussing certain aspects that have been that you have prepared for. So we expect you to come prepared so that you can add value to that discussion and so that you can get value from that discussion from both the lecturer who's there for you. Um, and with, with your online lecturer, you obviously can contact them. Um, 
outside of these these Adobe sessions because they will be in constant contact with you. So you have the Adobe Live sessions, and then you have um, online forum engagements where you start participating, you start giving your opinions on certain aspects where, and that that is all taken into account for your marks. Very exciting um, way of learning. And in the beginning, it may seem a little bit daunting. However, what we've had very good res results and um, we're going to chat to two of our um, one alumni and and um, Philip, who is actually still busy with his his MBA. Um, he's in the in the UK. So Michaela, um, well, I'd like to introduce Philip and then Fatima to give you an understanding of how he has um, managed his. Um, work-life balance, yes. what strategies that both of them have used to progress very well through the program. So over to you, Philip, and then to Fatima. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yes, um, I must admit the online platform um, that I've used has been very, very easy to do on. Um, I found it um, very supportive from our program manager. Um, Ms. Mira has always been very responsive. So in terms of, of doing it um, by yourself um, at home, it, it does feel daunting in the beginning, but with all the support and um, just the direct contact that you feel you have with the institution makes it very, very easy. Um, so just my experience, sharing my experience thus far, I must admit, um, traveling between various countries whilst doing the, the, the course was, was challenging, but um, I think that the thing that saved me was the fact that it's, it's structured um, over a 10 week period and and you know exactly where you need to be in that stage so you know when you're falling behind you know what is expected of you over the, the whole 10 weeks for that subject so you kind of know um, where you need to really put 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 in hard work to catch up um, but apart from that it's, it's been really it's been a good experience but I'm not gonna lie it is tough so um, you have to know you've got your work cut out for you when you when you sign up it's 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 it's, it's a lot of um, work content that you need to get through but um, I've really thoroughly enjoyed the subjects that I've done. I think it, it's, it's very informative, and I've learned I've learned a lot. Um, things that I can apply on a daily basis, and I think that's that's basically what you want from from the course. Great, thank you, Philip. Thanks for that, Fatima. Oh, have we have we lost Fatima there? One never knows these days. Okay, I think if we manage to get her Hi. back there, yay! Hi, <laughs> Hi. It's Jane. Um, Hi. I uh, just uh, I have to reiterate what uh, Philip said. I uh, have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed um, studying my MBA through Mill Park. I think the subject matter is excellent, and I really do think that there's a massive focus on um, being a better person and how you can contribute positively to society. It, it permeates every single module, and um, when I see what uh, my friends have studied in uh, various MBAs outside of Mill Park compared to what I've studied, and also what they've taken out from, from their studies and their focus. It's very, I think it's different to what uh, Mill Park offers. And I think you get a very um, balanced uh, viewpoint of the world and also a very good understanding of how your actions can influence the people around you and also company policy and a very good understanding on how important it is to to have um, a, a drive within you to to make a difference and better the world around you so I really do think that's an outstanding quality of the Mill Park um, MBA that I don't think other MBAs have I think they're far more driven um, just to to make you a, a productive tool and quite a capitalistic um, you know just try and get as much profit out there, which uh, in, uh, which Mill Park does, obviously you need to do that, but you need to do it in a very responsible way. So I think that's really good. Um, like Philip, I won't lie, it is a lot of work. 
Uh, it is a lot of work. Sometimes you're in the middle of a module and you just, you have to really, you know, motivate yourself and just take a flip the way you're looking at something um, and just basically say, look, this is fun. You're going to have fun doing this. You have to do this. So let's just get through it and, and make it fun. Um, but I have also thoroughly enjoyed it. It's changed the way I look at things. It's changed uh, my outlook on life. It's changed the way I manage myself as well. Um, when I have a problem now, I think about the strategy. How can I get around it? I apply uh, what I've learned uh, through my MBA uh, in my own life as well. So it's just been an incredibly good experience. I've really, I've actually really enjoyed working online. Uh, it's very difficult, but I think you become far more driven. Um, and I was lucky to be part of that uh, emerging market, um, emerging market module. And it was a blend between online learners and and uh, contact learners, and there was a vast difference between the the uh, questions and the the drive between the online learners and the contact learners. You you you're not spoon fed at all. You drive yourself, and you know what you're there for, and you get the answers that you need, and you make sure that you stay on track all the time. And you could see it in every single learner that was between a contact and an online distance learner. The online distance learners shone very brightly. So I, I think it's a, it's actually a very good thing to learn online. Um, it's very challenging, but you learn and you grow a lot. That's Great. what I have to say. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'm glad you enjoyed that, that tour that you had. It was a fabulous um, one last year that you went on. So that's great. <laughs> right, I'm going to hand over to Kubis to finish off. Thank you both, Philip and Fatima. We really appreciate your time and giving a bit of input. Um, Kubis, I'm going to hand over to you to tell us to finish off and to, um, yeah, and then we will have time, I hope, for some questions. Absolutely. Fantastic. Colleagues, um, that was so marvelous, uh, uh, Jane, Dr. Jane, thank you, um, and uh, special thanks to, to Philip and Fatima um, sharing your experiences, and uh, just perhaps uh, as a matter of interest for those uh, who don't know uh, or who's not very um, up to date with, with, with rugby, but, but Philip is our, uh, our school's uh, rugby superstar, um, played for the Sharks, captain the side, internationally very active at the moment. Um, if my if I've got my information correct, he is with the uh, Newcastle Falcons um, in the UK. So uh, you know you can imagine the professional is traveling the globe very very frequently. Well, us perhaps not so much in the last um, month, but fitting in uh, an MBA between all of that um, is 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 very demanding. And he has found his way in, in the in the kind of uh, um, the scheduling and, and the way in which we've structured it to actually also attain that. So, Philip, thank you very much. And, and, and Fatima, also your experiences that you've had, um, also within a very busy work schedule, fitting everything in, family, uh, social life, um, and, uh, and other things in between a, a demanding program such as, such as the MBA. So thank you so much. And um, I'm with our visitors to our virtual um whole year will also take take for for granted what you have shared with with us so uh colleagues maybe let me just uh try and wrap a a, a uh, wrap up for us uh for you to take away why for us um well you know firstly as i said we're very proud of of our amber accreditation and um reminding yourself that we are the only online Amber accredited MBA in Africa. And as I said in the beginning, also proud of the MR ranking that have ranked Mulpak Business School number two overall in South Africa of providers of the MBA and MBL programs. Our, our programs are uh, contemporary, we, we argue, and we believe firmly in that, and they are relevant. Now, you can imagine that something like the, the COVID-19 pandemic caught most of us unawares. Um, so the team obviously very in touch with what is happening in the world and um, with frequent engagement with webinars with the with Amber as well as with Prime 
the principles of responsible management education. We have frequent discussions on the impact of these, this pandemic, um, uh, not, not only economically, but socially, and spe specifically with us, w through you know, with the Sustainable Development Goals being kind of the filter through which we and look at the, wo the world, um, you know, those, those kinds of things are on the front um, of, our, of, of our agendas in ensuring that what we have in the program will also talk to the needs of the, of the modern management practitioner and leader. With, along with that, we believe that our facilitators um, are very experienced. They come from industry. Uh, because you need to draw those experiences into the classroom, um, and by classroom, I now also thereby imply the online classroom. So um, now, in that learning environment, we endeavor to promote growth-producing experiences for our students in order to endeavor to impact all three modes of learning, namely uh, cognitively, um, and emotionally, and also physically. Now, by physically, I don't mean uh, that one uh, does weight training or you run around, but you have to also um, engage your, your, your the biological side of, of, of who one, one is and complete that full um, range in, in, in involving all three modes of learning. And that is what we aspire for and what we endeavor. And as I've noted yesterday as well in the discussion we've had with a, a company in the UK, um, perhaps uh, you, you know them, Gartner, the schools in technology. I uh, emphatically again stated that um, with Mill Park Business School, the student, the student is the focus in our teaching and our learning transaction. So the, our students are the main players on our stage and everything around them and uh, in terms of the learning experience that we are creating, uh, the growth producing experience that, that we are creating, it is with that in mind. So that is just something for you to also take away. Um, I really thank you all for your time. I said we have a question there from, uh, from Cajiso. Cajiso asks, uh, can I enroll two or three for the semester? subjects or compulsory to enroll uh, is it compulsory rather to enroll, uh, for 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 all of them semester um jane if 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 you would kindly uh address it for us we yes. appreciate it yes so kahisa you can definitely do that um the ideal would be for you to enroll for the the four for that semester however we do understand where people are and especially at this time so depending on what you what what is on offer at the moment your program manager will work with you to say okay these two or three you can do now and then your your progress towards the end to try and get you to to finish um and to complete on time so yes you can do that and we'll help you with the structuring for that no worries. And and Leslie, our student advisor, will also help you with that. Fantastic. That's Dr. It. Jane, thank you so much for that uh, response. Uh, colleagues, if there's any other questions, please, you you still have a, a few minutes to uh, to punch it into the question tab. Alternatively, you will notice these polls, uh, uh, a link at the bottom of the page as well. Um, where we ask, uh, would you like us to make contact with you with regards to the offerings, which you can just indicate there, and we will pick it up from there, and uh, as soonest we will then help you. Um, if there are no other questions, um, I just need to reiterate that it is, uh, it was really an honor to have you all here this morning. Um, in this challenging times, uh, we from from the business school wish you um, all the best. Um, stay positive, and remember tomorrow is beautiful. That is the mantra that we've adopted as a school. To also subliminally, um, in our way of thinking and reasoning and looking forward, that we live with hope and with aspiration, 
and also inspiring one another with that view that is beautiful. Um, Floyd, I see that you do you offer this via recognized prior learning and what are the requirements? Um, so, Jane, uh, would you like to react on that? Yes, so we do. There is an option for, for RPL, recognition of prior learning. Um, we would look at, we, we have a set of criteria or, or aspects we take together, and that would be your any past um, qualifications you do have. For the MBA, uh, there's, you need to be in a senior management role and um, because there we need to see that you are going to be able to kind of import, impart that knowledge, you've had that experience. So we look at your CV. Um, we, you also need to do the um, assessment test and we take all of that together with for the MBA a, an interview. However, the spaces for uh, both of the uh, qualifications are regulated by um, the Department of Higher Education. So we are only allowed to take 10% of our total enrollment for that. So it is um, incredibly difficult to get in, uh, especially for the PGD. However, we do take that and we take that into consideration. So, uh, and again, Leslie would be able to assist you with that or even one of the program managers. Thank you, Jane. Appreciate it. Floyd, um, so there you have, have uh, uh, an answer to that question. So, colleagues and, and friends, fellow citizens of our beautiful country, of our wonderful continent and of this globe, uh, we wish you all the best. Um, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and um, looking forward to engaging with you again very soon. All the best. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.